Hello everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to our weekly live stream at Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition online role-playing adventures. I am joined as always by my good friends, Chris, playing the Nord Detective, Yuan T Inquisitive Rogue Divination Wizard, Manix. I'd actually hear him though, that's distressing. We might have other Did problems now. Oh, now? now I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Heather playing the Dark Dead, uh, the dealer, uh, half drow, uh, assassin, uh, rogue, Coles. <laughs> Uh, and yes, dear, you are cutting out pretty bad for me. Oh, Discord, why are you doing this to us? Rochelle uh, <laughs> is feeling under the weather, uh, playing the deep water diva Triton Bard of Whispers Gillian, not joining us tonight. Raymond playing the heedlessly brave turtle battle master fighter rogue George. Now, has he stepped out or is he underneath? That's the question. Reese playing the metal laced <laughs> mighty hill, mighty morphin hill dwarf druid of the moon Theron. He, he, he could be I out of any. He stepped out, no underneath. He could be, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also had a pair of birthdays since we last were here for D and D. Happy birthday to Reese and happy birthday to Raymond. Happy birthday! Yeah, we we stopped keeping track at, at this age, so. <laughs> We stream our sessions live on YouTube every Friday evening. Watch all of our D&D live series, as well as reviews and Let's Plays on my YouTube page. We read weekly session recaps at RogueWatson.com. Watch my behind-the-scenes No Players Allowed live series, Crafting Annihilation, on Thursday mornings. You can follow me on Twitter at RogueWatson and join our official Discord discussion group with invite link in the description below. If you would like to support the channel, please check out patreon.com slash rogue Watson. Shout outs to platinum patrons, Andrew, Richard, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Nick, Andy, and Chris. And gold patrons, RPG Papercrafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, Yuma, Marco State, Vicente, Gilberto, Sean, AK, Cert, 2B, Adam, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Rosh, Lumpy Spuds, and Jerome. Thank you all very much for your support. For our campaign, we use Roll20.net. For video chat, we use Discord. And for streaming, I use open broadcaster software with Streamlabs. Previously on Tomb of Annihilation... After defeating the Tomb Guardian from the Clairvoyant Pool, the party opened another secret door, leading to a hallway containing a spiral staircase plunging down and two doors. Kles went down the staircase, stopping at the next floor, and saw another Tomb Guardian peering through a window to a room beyond, his armored hand on an iron lever with a nearby crawl space. George invisibly glanced at the northern door, realizing that this was the workshop that Kles and Mannix had found uh, from the secret passage on the first level. Mannix opened the door to the western room, and Theron hurriedly gathered the party to follow. Inside was Mr. Withers, the engineer and caretaker of the tomb in what appeared to be his office, along with a pair of tomb guardians and swarms of disembodied undead hands. Withers was surprised but amiable, inviting them to ask him three questions of whatever they wanted to know, and in turn he would ask them about their journey. After some back and forth, Withers showed them the door, but the party refused, with Theron charging in to chomp on some undead and Mannix casting a spell. Kles stabbed Withers in the back, resulting in a nasty blight spell that drained much of her life before she finished the job. But instead of collapsing into death, Withers' onyx skull amulet lit up and teleported his body away. The tomb guardians and swarms of crawling claws wailed on the party, proving a difficult fight when George backed out of the room and returned to the grand staircase, throwing coins into the air and taunting the god-possessed slod. The trick worked, and George's true sight bandana saw the creature creeping up on him, snagged him with a thorn... A thorn blade and proceeded to slash it to ribbons. The slod tried to blow them both up with a fireball, but failed, but survived against George's onslaught to fear him into retreating. In the process, George dropped his thorn blade and the slod scooped it up, disappearing once again. The office battle finally ended, and with the party leaving most of their blood and sweat all over the floors. For their trouble, they gained Withers' last journal entry, a skeletal songbird, a cryptic code involving a mirror, and a fist-sized gray stone. Where you all find yourselves in now. Still in the office. Because that was a long fight. <laughs> right. It really was. And George, we need to talk. <laughs> About what? With my knife. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I talk. Well, if it's time, George will come back into the room and find us all bleeding to death mm -hmm. George opens the door met by regular fair George opens the door DM that's your cue George opens the door yeah oh sorry I didn't realize the door, the door was closed 
DM's a little slow tonight, you guys. Sorry. George is drenched in sweat. He obviously looks like something scared the bejesus out of him. Oh, is that why you're sweaty? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that slod. He got the best of me. I... <laughs> Again? I'm not leaving this tomb until I kill him, but <sighs> I did more Better damage than he did to me. Let's go. <laughs> Come. Yeah. I have a plan. <laughs> I'm not leaving this office for the next like no. half hour. No. Yeah, no. I need, sitting down I right need to breathe. Yep. I just sat on a table. And... <laughs> <laughs> your your slot friend can wait, George. Fine. We'll rest. His his tracks should still be visible. Whatever you say. I fear I have made an arch nemesis. <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, how many can how we many see does George have? Can we see if we notice that George's sword is gone? He took my sword. <laughs> George, tell you. It, it probably is obvious, but also, yeah, George would also be very truthful about it. <laughs> Hear Wonga laughing in the back of my head. Yeah. It's like Moa. Uh, you guys do see one more thing in this office. Um, is it a perma health potion? No, uh, underneath one of the like dead crawling claws, you like brush it aside. Something else that seems of uh, importance: a parchment of paper uh, that shows a drawing of a large stone door with what appears to be a giant like carved closed eye in the middle of it, and it's surrounded by ten indentations that are all uh, circular. And the only written notes on the on the note. Uh, the only written uh, notes on the parchment, on the drawing, just says level three. We need ten fingers sticking there. Who wants to lose a couple of hands? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's a picture of a door with an eye, and then around it is ten indentations? If only I had a visual aid for you. If only! <laughs> I've added another quest to your log. Yay. Oh, do we need to collect 10 eyes? Yes. And any eyes will do. <laughs> How many eyes do you need, man? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is good uh, one. I think you well. could give two. <laughs> I've got more eyes than most. Really <laughs> well, to having one. And if we take 10 long rests, I could do 10 greater restorations on people. Just pluck that oh, out each time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> An eyeball factory. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll volunteer. One, it's one Mannix, it's one you're up. Right. <laughs> so painful. Can we get Gillian's song of rest? Yeah, you guys want a short rest yeah. in here? Yeah. Please. Orbix. I heard that door. That. Yeah. I have the alleys. Pile some uh, armored zombies in front of it. Yeah. Um, Gillian can do the, sh the song of rest. Which is, what is it now? Extra D8, I think. Uh, mm. Oh, wait. That doesn't click in. I think it's a D6. Or did it upgrade? I think it might have leveled D8. up. I think it's leveled up. D eight. Wait, what, what level are we? Uh, nine. nine. D eight. <laughs> yeah, chat really wants Theron to have that staff of striking. <laughs> Yeah, I think Kales stole it at some point from Mannix. It's been changing <laughs> hands quite a bit. Yeah, I, I, see, I don't have it anymore. Whoever's got it. It's the party's regifting magic item. Uh -huh. right. Uh, 
Wow, 14 hit points. Wow, five hit points. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take that. That's a lot of hit dice. We had a lot of hit points gone. Do we need to roll anything for Gillian? Probably. Uh, yeah, question. she's actually hurting pretty bad. First. <laughs> During this whole short rest, George is sharpening his single sword. And Aww. I will get him. So, George, what exactly happened to you out there? Because from our perspective, we all decided as a group (laughs) to fight Mr. Withers over there. He's not there there anymore. Last we saw, the door got slammed, and we we lost sight of you. I had a personal errand to run. (laughs) Thanks. At some of the, the claw marks on his body. Personal <laughs> error, huh? There was Martin no stuff? room. There was no room left in here. There was no room in the inn. And I chose okay. to pursue my personal errands. We're allowed to have errands, personal errands, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I look sort of like where we're at, I can't imagine anyone would have any, but okay. I figured this was the best opportunity to lure that slot out. I almost there got in the, the staff. I'd be like, what? here. I'm handing there in the staff. Be like, here. Manix didn't need. Hey, the Thanks. staff stole that from me. <laughs> <laughs> Two She'll days ago. It. She'll just turn like him to prove it. I, that was with me. Who cares? I, yeah, I don't remember it being taken, so I cannot. <laughs> that yeah, was man, at least two god possessions do. ago. <laughs> That's right. My, my my head's was in a totally different place. Tell us how this thievery makes you feel. Is it the staff of striking? Yes, the staff of striking. Now it does require attunement, Mister Theron. I believe. Yeah, I know. The ultimate bonking. Yes. Uh, I guess I'll just have to unattune my other staff, right? Staff of Thorns. I mean, it's up to you what items oh, you want right. to tune. Gonna... You can. Yeah. You're going to trade me before all this happens. <laughs> so I need to sit back before and let some happens. inventory management happen for a second. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> my skeleton's my own. You know, the bad part is is he's kind of like emboldened me because now I kind of want to steal from all of you and just see what I can get. I mean, we're all just kind of shocked that it's taken this long, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, every time I try to say I want to pick their pocket, you always tell me no. <laughs> I try, so, try to shut you down with that, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I I learned to stop asking. And Similar then it's just party became... on party combat. Party on party thievery is party on generally proud of it. Generally. Hey, if you can't feel it happening, it's not my problem. <laughs> that sounds like a really bad thing to say. It did not sound Dentist, as bad in my head. Dentists have used that excuse before. <laughs> Dentists. He's unconscious. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Your lord. Um. Yeah. There. Well, actually, I don't know if I could even use it. I was gonna say, Theron, if you're if you're unattuning that staff that lets you cast Thornwall, I think it you're actually getting rid of it already. I think it actually was tied to druid type druid? stuff, but okay, that's a, yeah, that was my question because Thornwall is not something I have access to. Is the yeah. Yeah, you can attune to the Staff of Striking. Um, And also, I presume you want to try to identify that uh, magical stone... uh, What the hell was it? 
I have to scroll up because you people rolled so many hit dice. Fist size uh, graystone. Thank you. Fist size graystone. Um, you can identify that over the course of a short rest and find out that it is a uh, a gem that appears to be tied magically to a specific creature in this dungeon. And uh, whoever is identifying it, if you want to give me an Arcana check to see if you know anything about how this thing works. I'll give you an Arcana check. Twenty-one. Yeah, Mannix, um, you think that this is a control gem for a gray slot. And you recall uh, one, of, uh, one of the cryptic warnings uh, was only a jewel can tame the frog. Right, we never did figure out what that one, what that one meant. Okay, so... Oh... So the way this gem works is that whoever holds this gem cannot be targeted by the slot. And as an action, the gem holder can cast the suggestion spell targeting only the slot. And it does not get a save. Oh, okay. You just command it. With all the... Uh, fine print that the suggestion spell has, which I think is like, right. you can't hurt yourself and all that kind of thing. Or 30 suicide. foot yeah, yeah. range. Yeah. And uh, it does require uh, concentration if it's something that you tell it to do that would last you know, a length of time basically. George, and your infinite cruelty to the grung. Would it would it make you happier than killing the slot to make it your personal slave? I can make that happen for you. <laughs> George is about to say no, but he starts thinking about what are you suggesting? Uh, Mannix will explain the, what the what the stone does to George. Can can I dress him up just like your undead? Uh, your unseen servant. My unseen servant doesn't wear clothes, but you can dress up however you want. <laughs> I know. I see him. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I know how you dress your unseen servant. Hi, Dave. He's not for public eyes. <laughs> um, can we make this slot do embarrassing acts? Probably. Humiliate himself? Well, most certainly. <laughs> this, this may be better than killing him. I am in favor of this plan. We gotta, we gotta it, get it, him within 30 feet. Oh. It does have a 30 foot range, yeah. Assuming he's still possessed by Ning Ning. As far as you we know. Just have to, we just had to set up a trap. Uh, while you guys are talking, you, you hear a knocking on the door. Knock, knock. Nobody's home. Put it on a mister with his voice. I'm busy in here. Um. You know how I do have Mr. Withers' voice. Orvix, answer the door. To Wait, open do it? Do need to hide? Do we need to hide? Well, I mean, if anyone's going to die, it'll be Orvix, so it'll be fine. Orvix is like, I'm, I'm not going to open that door. Look at these things. I'll literally just look at him. <laughs> uh, 
somebody open the door. Who are you more afraid of? Or- All right, or- Orvix um, opens the door, uh, but like does it where he's like opening it to where he's like behind the door as it opens, basically. Yeah, and I'm, be- I'm behind him. Yeah. He opens it, and you see one of those uh, undead tomb dwarfs um, standing there. And you all just kind of stare back at each other for a moment. And then the Tomb Dwarf gives out a yell and begins to turn around. Would you guys like to enter combat or no? I would like to stop him. Okay. Give me some initiative rolls, please. (laughs) If that means... If only I had my thorn whip. (laughs) (laughs) You fool. Oh, ouch, my oh, hubris. Oh, wow, that was bad. <laughs> that was Ooh. really bad. <laughs> this guy really got the jump on you guys somehow. I say that before I roll. Mm-hmm. Great. My magnificent eight. <laughs> George, you've got the drop. You're the first one to act as you all just kind of stare at each other for a hot minute. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'd like to grapple him. Okay. Um, have we not done that yet in this campaign? I have to look up that rule. Uh, that is a contested... Oh, so I'm sure... Yeah, we have done it before. Athletics, George versus its athletics or acrobatics. So I'm going to do my hidden roll system again, although it is not going to be very easy to do that. Uh, So I guess the DC is 21, because that's what I have to beat. Mm -hmm. Nope. (laughs) All right, so you successfully grapple him. Can I spin and, and get him in between me and Theron? Uh, yes, you can move with him. Uh, it's it's basically half movement, essentially, when you've got somebody grappled. Mm-hmm. I only have five feet left. Mm. Uh, just turning, just turning around. Is that does, is that five feet worth of movement? Yeah, um, just turning in place. Okay, I'll allow it. Um, we'll do it like this then. Sure. As you dance with each other. And George says, uh, what do you want? Um, the dwarf uh, seems to say something kind of muffled under uh, the mask, but then it just um, shouts, um, Here! Here! I've taken the master's office! Uh, I don't know who you're talking to. All right, George, you do have another attack, by the way. I think grappling only takes one of your attacks. Oh, do I? Uh, you can attack twice. Does grapple count as an attack action? It does, yeah. Mm. Um, so I have to attack again. Uh, okay. I will punch them with my claws. <laughs> wow. And um, um, use a point of superior die uh, uh, to push. Okay. Grapple him, flip him around, and push him into the crowd, and push him into the door. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you add the superior die to the damage roll. Target large to my muscle strength saving throw. Um, of 16. So either way, he's going to take some damage equivalent to an 11. Okay. Um, he does make the save. So I guess he still takes the damage, just doesn't get pushed? Correct. Okay. Uh, how much total? 11? 11, yeah. Okay. So you rake at him and try to shove him, but he kind of plants his feet 
glares back at you. That's the end of my turn. All right, Gillian. Uh, Reese, I assume. I got her. You actually have access to her sheet, too? I always have access to her sheet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still do. Okay. Um, all right, let's stab this guy, she would say. That sounds like something she would say. <laughs> it's stabbering time. <laughs> it's stabbering time. So use a hand crossbow. Oh. Sailing off into the distance. <laughs> How sad. I think she just has one attack, so she done. All right, Theron, it's to you. <gasps> to me, my favorite person. All right, step up. And use my staff of striking. Your new staff. Uh, 14. The dwarf is wearing some kind of leather armor, but the 14 does manage to find purchase. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> do you have, do you have uh, are you flanking him right now? Yes. Oh, yeah. You do have advantage. Oh, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, it's it's a new staff. You gotta, you know, yeah. uh -huh. you gotta feel the weight out of it. Um... I mean the description. I think I will. Right. So I'll do eleven damage plus. I'm gonna leave all that charge thing up to you, so you're gonna have to keep track of all that. <laughs> yeah. I'll use two charges. All right, chat. You're getting what you wanted. Darren's using the staff of striking. <laughs> it's a moderate effect. Wow. So eighteen total damage. Yes. That is the most damage I've ever done with the staff. <laughs> it is. It's a lot more Probably. Than Shillalag ever gave you. <laughs> the Shillalag. Stupid Shillalag. Um, so, Shillalag does better damage naturally. Oh, huh? really? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Even with a staff striking of being plus three? Oh, wait. Shillalag, is that. Oh, well, I don't think you're. I don't think you've got. I don't think you've got your profi uh, proficiency plugged into the staff right now. Oh, I can add shell lag on top of the staff. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I can. You... Yep. All right. Is okay. that it for yeah, you? That's it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Tomb Dwarf will once again yell out. Um, but he, he kind of yells out, um, he prepared in there! And uh, he will uh, take a hand and uh, reach back and just touch you, George. God, and touch me. Bad touch. A 14, I don't think, is going to hit you, however. Correct. All right. Um, try, it gets to do... Let's see. So that's one of it. Okay. Um, and then it can also... Um, even though it's still grappled, <laughs> reaches down and pulls out an axe uh, with one hand, and then it just tries to uh, slash at... Uh, Theron. What? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't, oh, I can't no. be critted though. Ah, there you go. Oh yeah. So ignore the second number. As you take right. seven slashing damage. All right. He's just literally like trying to touch George and then quacks out with his axe. <laughs> axe versus staff. Who would win? Indeed. <laughs> Um, you don't see anybody else appear, but it sounds like noises are coming from this room to the north. So, uh, I'll go to Kales. Okay. And then... Wait, where's my character? There it is. Wow. 
Wow. That's that's something bad right there. I mean, it's pretty awkward. He's in the middle of a George Theron sandwich. It's just, it's kind of hard to find Purchase in there. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. I'll use my inspiration to try again. That's better. Yeah. 30 points of damage, please. All right, Kales, after feeling a little bit more inspired, you kind of shake your head a second and then thrust your blade right up into its face. And it kind of shakes for a second and is still. And I'm going to take you guys out of combat because you don't see any other hostile forces around or anything else happening. You just, and no more noises come from the north, but you feel like obviously this guy has sounded some kind of a warning alarm. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Shoyli is really good right now. Because you're nice. really? to attack and plus seven to damage with oh, the current stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Be jealous of my <laughs> damage. Empower. George says, More are coming. Follow me. All right. As he takes off. Damn it, Max will kind of sort of yell, but not really to George uh, running ahead. Uh, if these are the same doors we saw earlier, these are probably trap-making sort of fellas to some degree. So there's probably something bad behind that door. George in front. It's fine. <laughs> George has already looked through that door. There's a... Uh, whatever is in there, I don't remember. Got to tell the truth, George. Uh, you remember a yeah, like a, a it workshop? I don't remember. I don't remember. The truth is, I don't remember. <laughs> I swear, oh, Your Honor, I don't remember. <laughs> I opened the door. I looked inside. It was so uneventful. I can't I recall. No there was nothing of interest to me. So I shut the door again. That that part is true. <laughs> <laughs> that part is true. Anyway, George is going to get back. Oh, George is not going in that room. All right. I, I'm a little hesitant to leave a bunch of trap-making doors at our backside, but... George says, you handle them. I have my own personal business. <laughs> you do as I say, George. I'm the leader of this outfit. No ah. one gets personal business on my time. You have to clock out. <laughs> You only get two hours of vacation time That's a year. Right. And this is not <laughs> what I And that's only after five years. <laughs> you accrue it. You accrue it. Ten minutes at a time. Ten minutes. <laughs> Man, Alex, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't understand what uh, this means. While we've been long resting, I've been crafting a set of rules you all have to abide. You can get passing out papers. <laughs> <laughs> will intentionally crumple hers up and throw it on the floor. So Gillian just drops hers on the floor. I spent a lot of time writing those parchments. <laughs> Darren reads it shakily. <laughs> it just says in scroll letters, I'm in charge. Do as I say. <laughs> you hear Papazotal in your mind say, these are the worst servants I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, tell me about it, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Insubordination. George said, "Look, the longer we spend squabbling, the further the slot's gonna get. If we have to separate the party, so be it. If you want to, uh, I'm with this, say... Papa." <laughs> Which, which Papa? There's only one Papa in town. <laughs> Our dads are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Papa John? <laughs> Papa John. Oh, no. No, not Papa John. <laughs> not Papa John. <laughs> he's, he's the boss after the lich. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. With all his pizza minions and racism. <laughs> <laughs> to destroy you all. He just shoots pizzas out of his mouth at us. <laughs> the flitch anyway. was working for me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, are you well, on your own, what Mannix? Mannix? What Mannix will do uh, is... Um, hmm. You will find a very un, um, unintrusive place in this little hallway I'm in, I'm in, he's in right now, just like maybe right in the corner here. Is he and he'll... going to indoctrinate Orvix? That's right. <laughs> Orvix, <laughs> over here into the shadows. Start his own party. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he'll put his uh, remote eye on the in the ground, like try to work it into some stonework or something so it's like, unobtrusive. It doesn't stand out. Pointing towards that door. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, how does the eye work again? Um, uh, as a clairvoyance spell. Okay. How does a clairvoyance spell work again? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. What? Down, you wrote these descriptions. <laughs> it's D&D. I'm not saying I didn't. We just haven't used this in a long time. Yeah. I just want to know if it works like an alarm or if you have to like be swapping back and forth between the damn thing. Uh, Why are you use the ask chosen questions? sensor through the sensor as if you were in space? Is your action you can switch between seeing and hearing? Yeah, why well, you gotta ask questions? Just have fun, man. <laughs> You're sucking all the fun out of it. Oh no! <laughs> With your questions and your rules <laughs> and your rules. <laughs> Now, what it doesn't say, which is weird because the familiar does spell this out, is whether I can still see, see through my own senses while I'm seeing through the, the eye. Because mm -hmm. the, the familiar specifically says, while you're doing this, you are blind. Okay. But this does not say that, so I don't know. Um, is, This is something you're attuned to, right? It is. Okay. I'm going to say it works like a tactical heads-up display on your... Eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like a little mini thing in the corner of your eye that you can look through, which is probably picture in picture. Yeah, yeah. Slightly disorienting, but basically you can see through it. After a few hours, you get used to it. Joy staring right. at that wall or a corner of your eyeball for or the the door, I guess. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> okay. Where do you have it to, yeah. it to where it's just pointing at this door? Yeah, basically. Okay. Just pointing to the north. Kind of gotcha. like down here, maybe near the stairs, I suppose, so it won't be stepped on. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, back in the grand staircase, you guys are in uh, with stairs plunging down. All right, we're going, George. And George is gone. George goes, George <laughs> character just goes slack. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I believe. Great segue. The slot anyway. was. I believe the slot was bleeding from our last fight, so I would like to look for a blood track. Uh, give me a survival check. Do you need special UV goggles for slot blood? <laughs> Invisible. George, you see uh, tracks that kind of are pretty haphazard. They definitely go along the walls and up above, and then you see them going across ceilings. You see like blood tracks everywhere. But then at some point, you see what looks like the blood just stop, uh, and you see blood dripping down all the way to the. Uh, you can see blood all the way down to the bottom, uh, to down to level four at the bottom there. But then you don't see any more blood. As if the creature either like poofed out or something, but it just kind of ends like directly over like the middle of the staircase. Can I see like what's down? Uh, is it floor? Or is it a hole down there? It's f it's floor with four giant gargoyle statues on top of pedestals. And then in the middle of the floor, there's a 10 by 10 square pit that looks like it goes down even further. So can you point to where the blood pool? Uh, not much of a pool. It's just kind of like little splatters here and there all over this uh, central area until it just stops. All right, 
right, look, if you jump into that hole, I'm going to say bye to you now. It's <laughs> <laughs> the last we're going to see of you. I mean, this slot is a mighty foe, but I don't think he could survive a jump like that. Hmm. I think we have to go down. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> go down the hole. You guys right, are cur- some- You guys are currently on level two on the staircase, and you see that there are stairs that go down to level three, and then the staircase continues to wind. And then it goes down to level four, and that's the base mm-hmm. that you can see. That's what the and the blood goes down how far again? You see blood all over the place, like little spatters mm-hmm. here and there, um, all mostly all over the central area. So the, the floor, I guess, of level four, but it doesn't. It, it you're just not quite sure. You're not able to track like where it stops and starts and ends or anything like that. Yeah. And none of them seem to go into any of the branching paths that you can see. None of the blood track. Here's the thing, George. If he was on any of the ceilings, which we know he can do, the blood could have just fallen to the bottom down there. So whatever we're going to do with this guy, I would say probably we just got to do it in this general staircase area and see if we can figure out where he's at. He's somewhere around here. <laughs> Motions to the staircase. Motions to the world. The world. <laughs> so around here, you know. Uh, you got a plan for actually attracting him? I know. Who has the most valuable jewel? I need it. Most valuable jewel. <laughs> Can I steal a jewel out of George's pack and give it to him? You could try, but I don't have any jewels in my pack. <laughs> I got a lot of fancy stuff in my backpack. I have cat. Does cat work? Mannix, come look at this blood. Tell me if you see anything more than I do. All right. I will investigate the blood. Mannix, g- give me an arcana check when you investigate the blood. An arcana check, okay. Twenty-two. I got. I got a magic lens in the glass. Yeah. Um, from what you can tell from the way the blood splattered around, there's less and less blood, and then there's no blood. And as you look at it, it appears to be through the blood. You can tell that this creature appears to be able to heal itself. Like the blood has been like, you can see that it's been like suturing and coagulating and things to where by the end of the little. You know, haphazard trail you see, there's just nut to where it looks like there's barely any drops compared to like the gush. And news, George, you probably wasted your time <laughs> messing with him the first time. Probably back to his full self now. Good. That's the only way I would have it. George, George just wants this fight to go on forever. Yeah. He doesn't want to be fighting this slot into eternity, like a Valhalla situation. <laughs> Basically. Morning. And goes and fights the slot. That's how he well, determines Monday morning. Go into the afterlife. <laughs> Time to fight the slot. <laughs> uh, well, he could be any- anywhere. So could be anywhere. Let us. Let's just keep going. Goodbye, cat. I, I do have a cloak of glittering gems. That sounds very like ostentatious, and. Expensive looking. So, George, maybe put this on. Put this cloak on. Maybe it'll <laughs> attract the slot to you. Sure. And also, it looks fabulous. It looks fabulous. It's, like, it's glinting uh, gems. Look at Elton John costume. It's just... Hell yeah. The newest in Chult fashion. But I don't know how I feel about this Fiverr. Versus battle. You want to just watch. That's true. Spectator sports. Yeah. Right. I don't really want to get involved. <laughs> this is your thing. 
<laughs> now you're gonna see the if you get involved, the entire rest of the party is gonna leave and go do something else, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, good luck, George. Yeah. <laughs> go oh, no, the door's things. closing. There's no room for us, George. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, find a door. We've got to go behind it. All right, Manix, hand it over. Pop darkness. Is oh, the, the, the cloak? Yes. Here you go. Rainbow colored, I assume. Um, How far of a drop is uh, from this, this area? Is that one floor or two floors? You are on level two. You've got level three below you. And then the bottom that you can see below is level four. And it oh, is 25 feet between floors. That's mainly maintenance, though. So it is currently a 50-foot drop from here to that square floor beneath you. That's a long drop. Um, Got this, George. First, all right, as George as is going to hold up. Are... Oh, There's a slide. I know you can hear me. I put this glittering cloak on the line for our one to one bat, and he throws it in front of him on the floor. Not down to the bottom, but on the same level. Okay. I hope you weren't attached to that, Mannix. And now oh, we no. wait. <laughs> but I challenge you to a one-on-one -on -one battle again. Oh, uh, the bad part is, is long goes in the back of my head, so when the slot appears, it's going to be kill it, kill it, kill it, uh, kill it, kill it. Yeah. However, nothing seems to happen. He's gone. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Damn chicken. <laughs> he picks up the cloak and throws it back at Mannix. Here. <laughs> and he just um, Colossal <laughs> stage was <laughs> real out. Did you tell George that those were fake jewels? I had no idea. Oh no. They're all plastic. <laughs> <laughs> cloak of beads. Um as far as we can tell, have we explored all of level two? I'm looking around trying to remember where we've gone and where we haven't gone. Yeah, as far as you can tell, um, if you had the if we were using advanced fog of war, you'd be able to see this better. But yes, you have fully explored, except for that northern door. Um which it leads down though, right? Which one? Uh the the one the one that you put your eyeball looking at? Oh, that door. Yeah. That yeah, door, yeah. yeah, that's the only place you that you know of that you haven't been in. Okay. Which we're pretty positive it's just dwarves for the time being. Yeah. Okay. Just a stack of dwarves. <laughs> stack of dwarves <laughs> and dwarves. <laughs> All right. Then Menix will push to the lead. This way, team. And he'll start making his way down to the third floor. All right. I guess there's a new leader. I can't <laughs> help it. Papa says I must lead. Papa, yeah. Okay, Papa. I'll do whatever you say, Papa. All right, you guys just Papa's, send... Papa's giving me all of my health. If I make Papa angry, I shrivel and die. <laughs> Don't make Papa angry. Uh, you all descend down to the third level of the dungeon. Strange purple mold permeates every inch of the stone walls, ceilings, and floor on this level. The mold smells like rotting corpses and occasionally releases clouds of smelly spores. Oh no. Don't breathe. <laughs> Everyone, stop breathing. And since you guys short rested, uh, if you want Gillian to turn on her light spell, I can, I can turn that on. Otherwise, she doesn't have that on right now. So it's just those of you with dark vision uh, that are currently seeing. And Manix, if you want to turn on detect magic, uh, we'll have to do that again oh, as well. I do, yes. Yeah, I'll say I do that during okay. the, while we're listening. Forgot about that. Uh, and then as you have uh, kind of looking around this area, you guys on this map now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, two things. First, uh, ahead of you, you see another one of those bronze plaques with uh, more writing on it in common. And this one says, walk through water with weapon in hand, slake your shadow at the font. The vulture is the first step. 
Write the gods. The walls of history tell all. Manix, to your immediate left, uh, you see two hulking uh, figures, which you recognize as these tomb guardians that are, are like those stitched together golems with covered in plate mail with the bucket helmets on top. They're facing each other, and they've got um, a spiked chain that they're both connected. They've got chains all over their bodies. There's a spiked chain um, connected to each of them uh, along the length of the hallway between them to your uh, west. So that chain that we see on the map is like tied to them and it's yeah. a spike chain? Yeah, it's like connected to them. It's a big spike chain. How high is this chain? Um, Probably somewhere between waist and chest high for average person. All right, so someone would have to like really like get down to go underneath it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Manix, as, as we come to this hallway, he'll do uh, some Thieves Can't hand signs behind him to Kales specifically. Uh, basically saying... Um, when they turn away, sneak up and assassinate. <laughs> and Mannix will create a... My, well, I, minor illusion doesn't move, does it? I always forget how illusion spells work. The cantrip, I don't think, does much. I'll right. uh, just create a sound or an image of an object within range. All right, I'm going to create an, a, a, an image of myself standing right here. Okay. Uh, you do that, and nothing seems to happen with these creatures, but out of the purple mold, an eye stock pops out <laughs> and looks at you. My illusion or me? Uh, it it looks at uh, you, and then you can see the eyes swivel around to the illusion and then swivel back at you. Oh, shit. Hi. <laughs> see, thieves can't come at you from the side as well, too. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> A very oh, commonly signed <laughs> thieves <laughs> can't, I'm yeah, sure. probably. <laughs> Mm, okay. Um, I will pop the minor illusion, the same minor illusion of just me standing there five feet closer, right right there. Okay. Uh, once again, you see nothing happening, but you see that eye stock watching, again, swiveling back and forth and watching intently. What's an eye stock? Like an like a eyeball on a... Eyeball on a stick. Yep. I feel like we've had this conversation before. I think we have, too. <laughs> Like a like a like a snail's eye or a crab's eye or something, where it's got like an yeah. eyeball connected to it, like an an appendage, basically. Can I just yank it out? You want to grab the eye stock? I'm sorry, I thought the eye stock was on the other side of the chain. Where's the eye stock at? Could you? Um, let's say it's like yeah, it's probably near you guys, like right here. Oh, near us. Oh, okay. I thought it was like over where I put my illusion at. Oh, okay. Um, I'll try to talk to the eye stock. Yeah. Hello, hello, Mr. Stock. <laughs> may, may I call you I? Yeah. <laughs> call me I. My father is Mr. Stock. Yeah, Mr. Stock is my father. <laughs> uh, it blinks at you. All right, let's kill it. Yeah, I was trying to communicate. No, <laughs> here's what you do with an eyeball, and he just pokes his finger into it. Okay. Um, uh, you do that, and the eye kind of oh, yeah. uh, gives off a little injured, like, you know, like an irritated thing, and then slurps back into the purple mold. And you see another eye stock emerge from down the hall, George. Uh, and this one. 
shoots a laser beam at you. <laughs> George, I need you to give me a constitution saving throw, please, as a Uh-oh. as a as a beam of energy comes <laughs> shooting out of that eye. This is a Zelda monster. <laughs> you just got Karen. George, you take 29 necrotic damage as you feel this wave of energy like decay some of your flesh. Shit, did we just find a beholder? All right, the eye is a new leader. See you guys. The eye is Lord. I'm following that guy. And you see that after it does that, the eye just blinks a few more times, then retracts into the purple mold. I, nobody just, touch the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> what did we learn? Nothing. Hmm. Well, we didn't learn is anything with, having to do with this chain. I'd like to use my mage hand to jiggle the chain. Keep, meanwhile, keeping my, my illusion up over here at okay. the other side of the chain. Uh, you jiggle the chain and still nothing happens. Jiggle it harder. Jiggle it harder. <laughs> All the force a mage can, can yeah. exert. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. <laughs> Not Make it twerk. Still. Who wants to play limbo underneath the chain? Go ahead. I'm going to take a closer look. George gets 10 feet closer. Okay, uh, still no reaction. I can see something here. Are those the... the, Yeah, uh, those are the... Yeah, you've seen these. Well, George probably actually barely seen it. Oh, right. Um, (laughs) You haven't fought one of these before, George. I I think you fought one in the... the, What popped out of the pool. Um, But these giant... um, They look like they've got a bunch of decaying stitched together flesh underneath this big hulking armor covered in chains and this one just has a giant chain uh connecting it to another one at the other end of the hall yeah they weren't that hard we could take it <laughs> how, how big is the chain can i just jump over? uh it's it's yeah you could probably jump over it why do we even want to go this that's a great question. <laughs> We're exploring, exploring this dungeon. <laughs> Down the hall, point. you do you do see a uh, a hallway that looks like it goes north, and then a pair of uh, large stone doors uh, at the far end of the hallway. Somebody's going to tell George that because he can't see beyond thirty feet. That's true. <laughs> George cannot see that. Doors down there. In the hallway. All right, well, then George is going to do a cool ninja flip over the chain. Pretty sure it's a trap, but... <laughs> but there's only one way to find out. Exactly. Uh, George, give me an athletics check to just do a nice like jump over this chain. That was a very nice jump, George. Uh, you leap over the chain so beautifully. Yeah, you definitely make it to the other side without any problem. However... <laughs> The second that you jumped over, uh, you easily clear and sail across, but th- that seems to activate uh, these creatures, and they immediately seem to uh, move towards an aggressive stance. So now I need you guys to roll for uh, initiative, but you did not take any damage or anything, just jumping over it. George, good lord. <laughs> Two 20s in a row. His, his roll 20 is broken. I think so. So I will remember the music this time. Much higher initiative scores this time around. Man, I rolled a 14 and almost got last. I was about to say, I don't think only one person went below that. What a bummer. You uh, get George- critically failed. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, George, you so leapt across, and yet you are yeah immediately aware that these things have been activated. All right. He, with the DM's permission, is 
gonna pull uh, out a shell sword. Never ask the DM's permission. What'd you say? Never <laughs> ask the DM's permission. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he attacks the bottom. He attacks the bottom one with his sword. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to number him. God damn it! Uh, George, you feel like a twelve is certainly not going to be able to get through that armor. With his other hand, he pulls out his staff of the python. It. Now he is a one sword, one staff kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to use it as a weapon? Uh huh. Okay. It is a uh, quarter staff, basically. Yep, that's what I input. Okay. It's just a just one d six. Seventeen will hit though. And with this extra attack, he'll use his shell sword again. You know what? Just for fun, I should have done this earlier, but he's gonna try to trip this guy. Okay. So extra uh, D8 damage, so seven more damage, and now you have to strength saving. All right, these guys do seem pretty strong. You see a 16. Let's see how they do. Oh man, fail. You trip it down, do the leg sweep. Does he drop his chain? Uh, he's not holding the chain. The chain is attached to its body. Gotcha. All right. With his last, okay. last move, he, he's. Yeah, no, that's it. He just he trips it. Okay. Yeah. Goes down to like its, its knees. Uh, Mr. Mannix. They haven't even stepped out of the thing yet. Oh, shoot. Um... You see, George, as you were attacking this one, the chain seems to glow, and you see that the other one seems to also take damage. Does he fall over also? It does not fall over also. Interesting. Okay. And you think like it you didn't do it seems like you didn't do enough damage to that one, but it seems like the other one took some damage as well. Basically they're sharing health. Okay. Can, uh, does Manic see anything with his detect magic when that happens? Question. Um, don't think that ch you see something weird going on with the chain, but the chain itself doesn't appear to be giving off any magic. George, I think they're sharing health. Load bearing is up. Okay, um, I will move up to the one George is attacking. And I will attempt to flame blade it. You have advantage too. Oh, right, I do. Thank you. I needed it. Uh, at 17? Yes. And once again, you feel some of that damage get transferred to the other one. See it visibly happening, really. Okay. Traveling on the chain. All right, I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage and take a step back. I, mean, I don't think I have to because he's on the ground, but I'll do it anyway. I mean, it can still try to... You die attack opportunity, I think. It's, it's just prone. Maybe we attack? Yeah, okay. Right. So but yeah, you can disengage. Uh, Gillian... As Theron is Gillian. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I assume she can't see still, right? Uh, it just depends on if you if you guys wanted her to cast her light spell or not going down these stairs. Um, yeah, she'll cast light now, actually. Okay. And that's a whole action. 
game, so... <laughs> Stupid light spell. I feel like that, that that spell has given her more trouble than anything else. Yeah. Her <laughs> having to cast light. Bonus action at least, right? Right. I know, that does seem lame, that light cast all action. Uh, Alright, Coles. Now things are lit up a lot, as you can see. Lillian's bagpipes light up. Oh, why am I rolling so bad? <laughs> you have advantage. Uh, it's, it is that one's prone, so you do have advantage, I oh, believe. I, I thank God. Uh, That's what... Okay. Oh, okay. man. Gillian's dr or the class is drunk tonight. Three it's and one. Wildly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not. That will hit, There though. you go. There you go. Stupid offhand. 21 points of damage on the offense. All right, jeez. <laughs> so much sneak attack with a 2D, with a freaking 1D4 dagger. Yeah. Couldn't use it on the big one, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once again, you see some of that damage get transferred. The other one's taking, like, damage at the same time. That's my turn. All right. Uh, this one stands up. And uh, attempts to punch, and this this one's got spiked gauntlets, like sp just spikes coming out of its gauntleted fist. As it attempts to uh, punch some clocks with Kales. All the clocks. Ow! Whoa! Oh, yeah. I rolled uh, maximum max damage. damage. <laughs> 26 yeah, damage. Gonna uncanny dodge that shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is straight up 2d8 plus 4, and I rolled two eights on those dice. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, I'm uncanny and dodging that shit. Okay, so you can take half of 26? Yep. Alright, it's gonna punch you with a second slam attack. Of course it is. With another 24. Or a bit less. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 21. I'm down to half health again. And then this one steps down. As the I have to do the chain in real time. Uh, and we'll go after George. It's actually going to move. Here, which means I get to do this to the chain awkwardly. Uh, it doesn't even care about actually getting the chain on you. It just seems to more just wanting to punch. This one will attempt to uh, punch at George. All right. Three 17s in a row for me. George, 21 damage. Gonna parry some of that. All right. Uh, uh, those are the exact same dice rolls. That's really crazy. <laughs> That's really fucking crazy. Eight and one. That yeah. Is crazy, huh? So wow. Yeah. Okay. So you actually reduced yeah. quite a bit. All right. Second attack, George. Can I roll another exact same? Because then I think be in weirdness. No, nope, that punch goes <laughs> sailing wide. Karma returns. Uh, Theron. Uh, I will cash Shalele. And run up to Guardian 1. And attack. Oh no, 23. And... I'll use two charges. Another 10 damage. Wow, so 24? 
Yeah. Okay. Obolaka, Obolaka screams in your head as you get close, like, ah! Oh, yeah. He saw how much damage <laughs> that thing did! Yeah. Give me Can't a... Uh, close to him. Yeah, give me a charisma <laughs> save, uh, Theron. All right, there you go. You withstood. <laughs> That's why yeah. I gave it all along. Very nice. Uh, well, and uh, obviously you see the damage, same thing. It's transferred between them. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. I, I was slightly worried about that, but yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, back to George. Did they just have like double the health? Uh, that's what I mean. What, where one of them has double the health if we focus on one of them. <laughs> Who used a reaction lately? Didn't somebody use a reaction? Uh, you used your reaction on the last round. And can you dodge a reaction? I can't dodge his reaction, yeah. But we're at the start of a new round now. No, you're right. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if... Um, you're right, it's a new round, too. Trying to decide if I should take an attack opportunity for number two or not. Mm. Yeah, they haven't used theirs, but but it's a new round. How do I feel? How do I feel? <laughs> All right, he's gonna take an attack up. Well, if he wants to take an attack opportunity, you can just step away from the Uh, yeah, these things are mindless. They will attack anything. As you try to run out, it slices out with its spiked gauntlet. Come on, roll 20. There we go. Does it make julienne fries as it slices? In For 18 <laughs> damage. It's hurting a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. guys, yeah. They're really just rolling well. It's not even like they're that. Like, what, what is the bonus there? Damn. 14. You don't think it's going to punch through their armor, George? There goes all my crits went away. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to do an extra attack with the same hand. 17 will hit them. Then, uh, as my bonus action. Second win. Okay. Wow. That's some hit points right there. Uh, Manix, right? Yep. So, if I were to run up to the other side of Kales, would I be? coming into contact with that barb chain? Um, you could be in that square without uh, getting hit by it. Okay. 5, 10, 15. I will run up. You're not 5 and... feet wide. Am I not? No. <laughs> not today. There we go. Ah, I don't know. See, George, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> 21. Nice. That does damage to both of them. Okay, that'll do it for me. Flames leap around their bodies. They make no sound, which is pretty eerie. Uh, what would you like a Gillian to do, Mr. Theron? Do we determine if they're like immune to certain types of damage? I think they're undead. Okay. So, we, which would mean poison, probably. All right, I'll do her. I don't, know. I don't think we know. Circle to blasting. That's just the ray spell, right? Is it three rays? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess That's... just a, like, scorching ray, basically. 
Just... Yes, three. Let's see. All right, first one. I'll attack number one. Oh my god! <laughs> sailing, <laughs> sailing away. Oh Perfect. boy! Oh, Can we get an eight? Can we get an eight? <laughs> Wow. Nailed it. I mean, awesome. nailed it. Those <laughs> fire streaks of fire just go sailing down the hallway. Watch out down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind firing laser blasts. One of the fire hits a purple mold square and you see oh, an no. you see an eyeball come out. Somewhere in the back of your mind you hear Oh, no, you didn't. And what? I need... Jesus Christ. I need Gillian to roll a dexterity saving throw. What is... Oh, shit. What is Gillian's... Uh... Would it happen to be an acrobatic saving throw? It's... <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't use skills on saves. Dexterity. What were you saying? What is her, what is her, what is her plus on a dexterity saving throw? Six. The plus six? Yeah. Oh, well, that, I'm not gonna, I was gonna use my <laughs> port, but it was plus You're six. fine. She's fine. Yeah, she might be actually. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty Maybe. good. Um, Still a lot of damage. You see a ray of just pure black energy with like skulls coming out. Little skulls. That, let, me sh a, let me show you it's done, a, Bard. A death ray? <laughs> Shooting out. Oh, look at that. He had a little, little thing. Yeah, I always forget about those things. Oh, I missed it. Oh, damn it. I'll never do it again now. Do it again? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't miss the graphic. It was so cute. Uh, it is cute. Uh, Gillian makes the save and gets to take half of 54 necrotic damage. Oof. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Good. fucking touch the shit. <laughs> I can't wait for Reese to try to explain this to her tomorrow when she hey. wakes up. It feels so. a little bit better, so let me tell you what happened last night. <laughs> You poked an eyeball. <laughs> After you were by told accident. To. Shot <laughs> by accident. Shot went a little wide. Yeah. You know that ranged right. attacks might get a little risky. Good thing we short rested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The walls are trying to kill us. Uh, Kales. Uh, hold up. He has a... <laughs> Gillian, that was a net uh... loss for Gillian's turn on that hole. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been better for her to do nothing. <laughs> oh, she could have cast light again. <laughs> Man, I miss casting that spell. <laughs> uh, she's going to cast Healing Word on herself. Okay. Just yeah, yeah. get something back. Right. Oh, uh, I kind of missed right, how upset she would be from missing a spell and having 50 <laughs> yeah, some know, damage right? just come back. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go back upstairs and cast light. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Kales, yes. Sean, she sure would have. <laughs> All right, let's try to stab this damn thing again. I'm back to normal, right? That's not an advantage anymore. Uh, that is correct. 10d10. Holy crap. <laughs> That's, yeah. You notice that was a different kind of ray, but was... Oh, good. <laughs> a death ray, an even deathier <laughs> ray, <laughs> and then a life ray. Which one will you get? 29 will certainly hit. It's always the death ray. It's always the death ray. <laughs> 30 points of damage. 30 points. All right. You see it get transferred equally amongst them. She'll just turn to Manny and say, take note. Uh, uh, hey. Sit. Oh. Hey. Yep. Good. 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 
Like okay, you still have a bonus action. You rogues scene. always do something. Can't let us have our moment, can you? Where? <laughs> do you want to touch the wall? <laughs> it's right it's there. Eyeball, please. I'm not touching no freaking eyeballs. No. <laughs> um. I'm just going to uh, disengage and take a step back. Mm. All right. Mm. I took 40 plus points of damage last time. No, no. Mm -mm. Indeed. Uh, and these guardians seem like... Semantics, why she steps away. So yeah. She, yeah, she's explained to you she took 40 points of damage as she steps away and leaves you alone. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's just a little pat on the back so good luck. Uh, I'll be let's... back. All right, Guardian number one. Darren was the last one to bonk him, I believe. No, it wasn't. It was uh, George. Uh, so George, Darren, uh, Guardian number one will attack George. For 20. God, these things are hitting like crazy. 25 damage for George. Do a second attack on you. Fat one misses. Manix, you're the closest one to Tomb Guardian number two. Not intentionally. <laughs> so it's going to be punching in your direction for some clock punching. How's a 19 do for you? That's going to that's gonna go through a shield, so I'll take it. Oh, well, no, I won't. 25 damage. Whatever, you got Mr. Amulet of uh, Health over there. You're fine. I, I, I mean, that's a third of it. One more punch. That one misses as that well. The Mr. Theron. No. They they both look extremely oh. damaged and wounded at this point. Okay. I thought they were gonna attack me. <laughs> oh, they they did a run out of attacks. Uh, all right. Theron's gonna get out Shillalag <laughs> forever. Oh! Wow. <laughs> He's found his moment with this freaking staff. Yeah. My goodness. All right. <laughs> Terrible damage. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and he'll expend another two slots. Ooh. Yes. Break. 17 nice. plus 9 is 26. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can do math occasionally. Have you been practicing math? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, that damage gets transferred between I them. you've been helping me. And you, yeah. <laughs> and you see them both start to slump and sag, and like bits of their armor and flesh is falling off. Blood is seeping out of all these wounds. Their stitched together skin is starting to rip apart. I think that they are not long for this world. Guys, I was so close. So close. It was a hell of a hit. Uh, we're at oh, George is already there. Twenty one hits. George is swinging already. George is already swinging for f eight. I got a sneeze. Yes, I muted it in time. I almost never do that. Hi, <laughs> uh, Set fifteen total. Uh. George, did you ever use sneak attack? I did not. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, with the 15 damage getting split between them, you, uh, you you thrust your blade through one of them, and it dies, and you see the chain light up, and it go to the other one, and the other one suddenly like jerks and then falls, clumps, uh, falls to the floor dead. They are no more, and the chain just falls to the ground. Still attached to them. There were no clues involving chains, were there? I only just now think to look that up. There were not. Uh, why don't we take nope. a 10-minute break, and we will return with exploring the rest of level three. We'll break music. Oh, well, that's what the hint is referring to.
All right. I believe we are coming back from our break. You all have defeated uh, some chained together tomb guardians and have learned an important lesson about messing with the weird purple growth on the walls, whether on purpose or accidentally. I really hope we learn a lesson a third and different time. <laughs> Could take some repeated lessons. DM cracks knuckles. However <laughs> many as it takes. Um, mm. All right, well, we cleared this hallway. This chain you said does not look magical in any way. It just tied them together. And it seemed to link their life force somehow, but otherwise it didn't yeah. have any other purpose. How long is okay. it? Um, it was about maybe a little bit more than 10 feet long. 10 feet of chain. Uh, what's it? What's the circumference of a slot? The circumference of a slot. They, <laughs> I don't think we, <laughs> we talk about people's waist size as a circumference, do we? Circumference. <laughs> Ma'am, what is your circumference, please? <laughs> I'm feet. Feet appreciate Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> uh, I'll uh, pick up the chain. Uh, the chain is still firmly attached and wrapped around these two hulking figures that are now on the ground. I will. Cut off pieces so I can pick up the chain. You want to cut it into like just that 10 foot chain, uh, that length basically? Yeah. Okay. Um, you do that, and it looks like uh, you, I mean, it takes you a couple hits to, you know, get through it, but otherwise you are able to uh, cut it off at those ends. And you now have a length of 10 foot spike chain in your inventory. George says, I'm coming for you, slot. <laughs> <laughs> Everything George gets from here on out is just towards that one goal. Yeah, that's the it's sole objective. <laughs> uh, from this hallway, you've got another hallway that extends north, a pair of double doors at the end of the hall. Mannix, as you get within this spot, you also detect a secret door right where George is. George, don't move. That classic, uh, just kind of the same kind of secret door you've seen everywhere, which is like special groove holes that make it into like a sliding door situation. Yeah. All right. I will, I will awkwardly reach into George's personal space <laughs> without telling him why. No, you don't tell him why. You're... Pa yeah. pa Papa doesn't fucking. Yeah. <laughs> you're in charge here, boss. They're in your way. If George, if I want to touch you, I'll touch you. Exactly. You can't stop me. What does it look like uh, Mannix is doing? <laughs> to George? Mannix? What does it look like he's doing? <laughs> looks like he's just coming for the. He's coming in for a hug, is what it looks like he's, he's doing. coming in for the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, I'm going to push him. <laughs> oh, he's going to rebuff. He's rebuffing. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, you know, I just wanted to hug. The, the god that's hug. possessing you is one of one of kindness. Technically. Oh, Moa. Yeah. George then politely says, "I don't want to hug." Yeah, like back <laughs> off! I'm. This is not what I want. I am not consenting to this hug. Um. Of kindness, you say. Of honesty, truthfulness, and kindness, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, fine. But, George, but Maddox isn't actually coming in for a hug. It just looks that way. It just it looks, looks that, way. that way. Yes. George notices and says, Maddox, I really need it right now. And he goes with the hug. <laughs> Maddox, what's your reaction to this? George, you... Misread the situation, my friend. I'm still going for the hug. What are you going to do? 
I mean, I'll take it, but <laughs> <laughs> wild charges. Uh, it's an act of fealty. Just, yeah, it's, that's right. It's like kissing the ring. It's kissing <laughs> the ring. Yeah. <laughs> But while George is hugging him, Maddox has got his arms out behind him, just moving the secret door <laughs> to the side. Okay. Yep. George, in the embrace, you see this secret door slide open. <clears throat> and uh, appears to open up into a small uh, room. Uh, very dusty room with stairs leading down to a pedestal. And on that pedestal, you see a golden skull. Like a human skull. What is this did you find? I don't know. I think it is a dark hallway to get to that pedestal. Or is it brightly lit? It looks, it looks, it looks like some stairs. Is it, it looks like that's it. Uh, everything is dark in here. The only thing in the light is from Gillian's yeah. bagpipes. <laughs> George can't tell it's dark because of his blindfold, so... Right. Mm -hmm. He says, huh. Do I see any magic coming off of the skull? Um... I'm going to say yes, but it doesn't register as any specific magic. You just detect that there's something going on with the skull. You're out of range, and you need to be close. No, he's in range. He's just—I I can't give you a specific school. So it's like you're—you're you're detecting something, but it's kind of—you're not quite sure what it is. All right, I'd like to Moa. Do you think uh, Ning Ning would go for this skull? Um, the Moa says that uh, Ning Ning probably would. Like anything that was uh, a treasury, uh, gold or something, it can add to its hoard. Step aside, Manix. He pushes Manix aside. Oh, no, <laughs> Literally tramples you down the stairs. <laughs> Over me. Hmm. George is going to investigate. Oh Lord. <laughs> Give me some investigation check, George. <laughs> George, like you a think it's a skull? skull? I don't. It could be solid gold. It could be a real skull, just spray painted yellow. You have no idea. <laughs> well, if Mo says it'll work, yeah. I think it will. And he reaches out for it. All right, George, you touch this skull, and it appears to spring to life, bouncing up from the pedestal and hovers uh, right in front of you with uh, just nothing at all in its eyes or anything, but it just opens its mouth and says, Ah! Yaka's here for you! Here to ruin your day, your week, your life! You will never get rid of Yaka! Just like you'll never make it out of this tomb alive! And it's just hovering around you and, like, just incessantly... <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, God, you've got a Chilton troll. <laughs> oh, permanent troll. Mo, what is, is this? Mo says, this, 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 uh, this was a fool. And uh, whatever the Omo N word is for, uh, it says some word, and your brain can, because you're he's got you possessed, actually translates it to, like, jester. Um, for the royal family of Omu, I recognize the name Yaka. No idea what became of this foul creature. It appears it was some sort of terrible existence now. And the whole time the skull is just floating. Uh, Why are you are floating around me? Uh, it says, you're my new best friend now. We're going to be together forever. George. George may be kind, but uh, can you at least change your voice? <laughs> you don't like the sound of my voice! Alright. 
George smashes the skull. George, you reach out with your weapon and smash it with all your might, and your blade rings off of it. Ding! And your whole arm shakes, and the skull just laughs. <laughs> no can do! <laughs> okay. Can I pick it up? What a wimpy hit! Is that all you got, big boy? <laughs> it's good. You have an internet troll. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can I pick it up? Uh, you can try to grab it. Yeah. Um, if you grab at it, it just seems to kind of dance out of your reach. <laughs> no, no, oh, so the the golden one here is still is gone. Sorry, yeah, this the, the, I can't erase the the map thing, but this is a little yeah. This thing is like floating around you. Uh, oh, I got you. So there's nothing on the pedestal now. Mm-mm. Got you. Mm. And Moa led you astray this time. <laughs> George made the choice to grab it. Moa was just saying that, <laughs> like, yeah, treasure would be good. You well, I guess if you can't grab it, you probably can't like put a bag over it. George, while you have this That's skull, while you have this skull flying around you and taunting you, you have disadvantage on all ability checks. Oh Man. no! Oh god! How do you get rid of it? Seal it back in the room. <laughs> You'll never get rid of me. What if I were to die? That would make me so sad! You're my best friend! I don't think it's uh, worth it to have you next to me. <laughs> not, worth it. not worth it. <laughs> uh, can I investigate the skull in some way? To do, I'm trying to determine if this is like a curse that George now has, or if this is like an actual, like, just an, just an entity that we can maybe actually interact with. Yeah. Um, you can either try talking to it, or if you want to just give me like an arcana check to try and detect anything that's going on here. Um, let me start with an arcana check. <clears throat> George, Everybody backed sure out of the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> George sure as hell isn't sleeping in the hut tonight if that thing's still with him. Oh, man. Um, I gotta check. Oh, no. I'm not yeah. distracted by the. Yeah, you're, you're trying to recall anything about some kind of cursed floating skulls or what's going on here. Can I go in and try to put it in a in a bag? Because I have really fast sleight of hand. Try to like snatch it. I mean, it seems focused on George. If you want to yeah. try to do something to it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to put it in a bag, like a really thick bag. Like a really thick bag. <laughs> yeah. bag I okay. I get it in the bag, and then I'm just shoving every kind of like fur and like pelt or whatever I can get my hands on. <laughs> Some of that purple goo. In okay. There. You wait. Are you grabbing purple that. goo? Don't, no. Don't touch the goo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're you kind of sneak up on it and put the bag over it and then shove some stuff in there. It's like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> you like shove more things on top until its voice is kind of muffled. Like, hello. Yeah. Is it still floating in the bag? Um. What did, What did you do with the bag? Uh, I mean, I just kind of like I'm holding it bunched. I'm tying the the bottom of the bag together. So I'm wondering if it's like trying to still float while it's in the bag. Because if so, I'm just going to put it on a string and give it back to George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's still capable of flying around. So I give him a muffled balloon. Okay. <laughs> He's a balloon. Thanks. At least it's muffled now. Hello! We uh like Italian mob this thing and like concrete shoe it and drop it in the hole. <laughs> I recall us taking out a flame like skull once upon a time that way. <laughs> That's right. Well, now that it's in the balloon, we could just leave it there and it would never know. 
Maybe the slot wants it, George. That's right. It's true. We make it transfer it over to him. We better uh, bring it just in case. <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. Uh, you do see a crawl space in this room, kind of on the floor. I was about to ask where was that little pathway. Yeah, and Kales, yeah. you 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 saw an exactly same shaped crawl space whenever you went down the spiral staircase and saw that tomb guardian with the iron lever. You saw a crawl space um, in that room as well. So it wouldn't be Ooh, too out of the out of the reach for you to put two and two together. Uh, yeah, you you could all fit. It's kind of like when you guys shimmied through that wine room uh, tunnel. Basically, you got a John McLean it. Oh, I I. Just now remembered I never told everybody about the, the tomb guardian down the stairs. <laughs> I should have remembered being told about a tomb guardian. At one point you guys all split up and did your own thing for a hot second there. <laughs> I shut the door to help mm-hmm. keep him from getting out. I figured he wasn't smart enough to know how to open a door. Can I, I uh, a, I before we link. go down there, can I send my owl into the crawl space? Sure. Lift my vest pocket. Let the fly, owl fly out. Yep, owl flies well, I out. Can fly down it, but just can just go hey, he's got a friend too. <laughs> You're gonna have to compete with my other friends, Daddy. <laughs> That's right. Put the monkey in there with the skull. Good <laughs> <laughs> company. Fight for my love. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see the owl swoop down. I don't know if you do you have vision of this thing. Oh, okay. No, I don't. I, I should though. <laughs> I usually do. Um, I wonder if I grabbed the wrong one. Thought you do. That's certainly the owl. The correct owl token. That's my owl. Grumpy looking. It's guy. the owl. Yeah, it says you've got. Well, let's see if I've. Maybe I don't have vision. Oh, maybe if there's no light. Right. Although I think we determined they've got dark vision, don't we? They do, yeah. 60 feet? Yep. Actually, I think Owl might have more than that, actually. Yeah, they have dark vision 120 feet. Jesus, okay. Fly in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, you send your Owl through the crawl space, and it comes across the exact scene that Kales saw, um, but... From a door, apparently from the north, but you see that door closed now. A tomb guardian looking out what looks to be a window into another room with his hand on an iron lever. And the window, if you can like, peek around and look through it, it looks like it's looking into this big, uh, this like cylindrical room on the other side. And the window, well, I guess you're not detecting magic because it's an owl, so. Is it to the south? Yes. And the tomb guardian is just looking straight out there just stoically, so it doesn't see the owl. I would hazard that we ought to take this particular guardian out. Whatever he's looking at and get the lever on. Probably going to be bad news for us if we walk into this cylindrical room over there. Uh, Kales, you got the sneaking stabbing. You want to do some of that? Always down to sneak and it's, stab. It's a tiny room. I'll be, I'll be able to start to come back. You don't ask people to do things. You're Papa That's Zoto. <laughs> Glass, you're doing some sneak and stabbing. <laughs> DM's just trying to like splinter up your party so terribly. <laughs> you hate him. Yeah. You're jealous of him. <laughs> Wongo does want to kill things. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to him scream at me to kill the damn skull right now. So. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm trying to explain to him. I did the best I could with putting it in a bag so it couldn't breathe anymore. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Manager take Papa Zoto's advice and put on his best manager voice. Like, Glass, I've got a prime use for your skill set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this. It's just simple. There's, you know, what, what do you excel at as an employee? You, <laughs> you have fantastic, you have fantastic stealth skills. You stab things like no one else on my team, including George. <laughs> And it just so happens to be a tomb guardian at the end of this crawl space that needs some stealth. It needs to be stabbed. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 40 points of damage in a single turn. 
Ongo's You're like, right stab! Stab! We have a chance to stab! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going in. <laughs> Here, Yaka say, Hey, Shell Face! You hear that? You're like the fourth best fighter here! Kalez, you have to like shimmy, <laughs> just knife in your teeth, I imagine. <laughs> yep, she just going sideways like. <laughs> Actually, because uh, this is like difficult type terrain, right? Yeah. Uh, you grease I, yourself I, up before you go in. <laughs> yep. I I am Willie, and so I yes. am going in. She doesn't have to crawl. She just does like the bobsled <laughs> whoosh at the beginning of the race. <laughs> Rock through the <laughs> it's a water slide. Oh, man. Except instead of water, it's like cobwebs and nastiness. Yep. Uh, so much oil. I'm gonna sneak up on this bad boy and give him a stab. Uh, once you're well and gone down the hallway, uh, I seal it up. <laughs> <laughs> Break up that crawl space. <laughs> She's gone. For She's gone. For we have a new friend of the. the Send her family skull. a ham. Right. Yeah, Yaka, you're the new class. <laughs> <laughs> you can stab things, right? <laughs> um. Let's say, uh, Baron, you're in next. Back her up if she needs it. I don't think so, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're not going in there. <laughs> no. I'm staying right here. Is this insubordination? <laughs> what? Is this insubordination? Or is this mutiny? <laughs> A real dark look. It's a man I will turn <laughs> this dungeon around. <laughs> <laughs> George says, I'll go. go. Hold this as he hands over Yaka. On a stream. I really don't want this. <laughs> Yaka Loon? Yaka Loon, yeah. Yaka Loon. He kind of <clears throat> shoves it at Manic. And, uh, can I fit through this thing? You can. Very, very, like, squidgy. I'm making any noise. I'm going to immediately go in and try to stab this guy to get my sneak attack off. Okay. Yeah, Manix, you're holding this balloon, and all of a sudden, with some kind of magical, mystical force that's not even you being able to hold it on, Yaka just flies out of your grasp, still in the muffled bag, and hurries after George. He's like, you can't get rid of me that easy, big guy! <laughs> Coming in hot! Half-heartedly half yells, sorry, George, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm going in to get my sneak attack off. Yeah, because you hear Yaka just mumbling behind George. Like, what are you doing? You're going to get yourself killed. All right, uh, go ahead and give me a uh, surprise round sneak attack, Miss Assassin. It is surprise. I get advantage. It's like stab, 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 kill, kill, kill. Shut up, Longo. <laughs> Twenty-seven, and then I'll have to roll all the damage again because of assassinate. Any hit score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Auto crit. How so, can you do that, big guy? Didn't think so. That. So five. You can't even see what she's six. doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> do I get my uh, my bonus on the the one d eight for the damage for the the sword? For the crit? Uh, for crit, you get to roll all the dice again. Okay, even with the, the modifier? Uh, not including any modifiers. So no, you just roll the 5d6 and that 1d8. 
so I don't get my dex added onto the 1d8. Not for the crit damage, no. Okay. How much damage can Kales do with a Mercy? That seems like a lot. I'm not 32? doing that math. No, 52. 52. 52 damage. And that's with my sword, yeah. Okay. Come on, that had to have been massive. Is that me having to say? <laughs> that is massive damage for sure. Yeah, you know these guys are beefy, but that was for sure massive damage. Uh, so that is a con save. If it helps, I'll do some of the extra blood drinker damage too. If that'll end up killing it. Uh, well, let's see if it if it gets fainted from. Uh, it does survive against the massive damage. Did it survive against massive damage? It's got a pretty good con. Doesn't it? It's like, isn't massive damage like it's like? Oh wait, I'm thinking of the oh the damn zombie thing. That's yeah, the thinking. massive damage rule is just a DC 15. Yeah. That's some bullshit. All right. So before I do my offhand, I will do an extra 2d6 to it. Okay. For the blood drinker blade. Mm hmm. And it. I have to learn how to spell the word roll right. Hmm. Eight to me. Yeah. It's all right. It still took more. Yeah. It looks like it is sagging pretty bad. Then attack. And then just an extra two on that. All right. Um George, I'll let you go ahead and get a surprise round too, since you're kind of on your way. Um it is difficult to rain through here. Um can I pop out or uh, if you can get past Kales with all, I don't know what your tracking movement is, but it would cost twice to get past Kales. Mm. What you've got left, I otherwise. I wasn't really keeping track. I just got sneaking through. Um, I think you had so ten feet of movement here, ten to get through Kales. So yeah, if you you've got thirty, right? So you could make it to that square mm -hmm. above the Tomb Guardian for your full movement. In here. Okay. Um. George says to the two burning, kill me. Uh, George, you do have disadvantage what, with the skull. What do I have disadvantage on? Everything. All ability checks. Everything. Wait, but that's... that's well, it says, oh, oh, you're not going to be able to survive this! It's just an attack roll. It's not an ability right. attack. I think an attack roll is included in that. That's what I was trying to actually Google right now. Hey, now you're just making stuff up. <laughs> I think that's the idea behind it. Because an attack roll is basically a either strength check or dexterity check. I don't disagree with you, but it explicitly says attack rolls in most other abilities. Most other descriptions. Okay. No attack rolls aren't ability checks. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm trying to find uh on attack rolls and ability checks. See the sage advice. I'm trying to look up a Jeremy Crawford, because I think on the <laughs> what does it say on the curse? Sage advice, here it is. Yeah. It says um, to make all ability like checks with disadvantage. That's all it says on my end with the skull. All right, Jer uh, Jeremy Crawford, our attack rolls, ability checks. <sighs> there. On attack rolls and ability checks to see the Sage Advice Compendium. <laughs> That's the same one I just found. Screw you, Jeremy Crawford. All right, yeah, why is it not it answering is. it in a tweet? Damn you. Chat, do you know the answer to this? Our attack rolls, ability checks. Yeah, two people telling you no. So Great, far. That, just, that just opens an entire fucking PDF. This is a big PDF, too. 
our attack rolls and saving throws basically specialized ability checks. They aren't. It's easy to mistake the three rolls as three faces of the same thing because they each involve rolling a d20, <clears throat> adding any modifiers, and comparing the total to a difficulty class. And they're all subject to advantage or disadvantage. In short, they share the same procedure for determining success or failure. So they're not the same thing, but they share the same procedure. Uh, so despite this common procedure, the three rolls are separate from each other. If something in the game, like the guidance spell, affects one of them the other two aren't affected unless the rules specifically say so okay and this one does specifically so just say roll, ability yeah. checks yeah so an attack roll per the say D D 5e <laughs> rules creator is okay. not an ability so it's okay so saves is one category ability checks is one category and attack rolls another category all right so you have disadvantage on just yeah. ability checks george mm. All right, so first one does hit for 10. Second one, 28, does hit as well. And he, he will use a stick. Whoop. Excellent. Yeah, chat seems to be in agreement. All I right. Yaka's not as painful as I thought. <clears throat> oh, it's still annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. That thing looks almost dead. I'm gonna put the th just the two of you and the Tomb Guardian initiative order. Um, basically, just to see if it's gonna get off a hit or not. So let's go ahead and roll initiative just for us, real quick. Oh, balls! All right, uh, George first, actually, because it does turn around finally and uh, look at you. George is getting all his attacks off, though. Oh, look at this guy! <laughs> Uh, 11. George, you actually put your sword right through his freaking face uh, and down it instantly. You know, less health than I realize. George said, what do you think of that? I was fine, I guess. <laughs> Took you long enough. I think she did all the work. I like I this know. thing. Let's count. <laughs> <laughs> Mongo seems satisfied. So yeah, this thing was standing in front of what looks like um, what is this? Uh, a rectangular window five feet wide by seven feet high. The window looks into a hallway through a rectangular hole in the hallway floor and farther down into a well-lit room shaped like a cylinder tipped on its side. And then there's an iron lever right next to where the tomb guardian was who previously had his hand on it. I look at George and tell him he can go back with the skull and tell him that the Tomb Guardian's dead. And I'm going to stay in the room with the lever. Okay. Yeah, and Calissa, you recognize that door on the other side of George, mm -hmm. the one that you exited out. Obviously, you recognize this whole room. So that leads to the spiral staircase. Yeah. That's just to do the lever. Come on. Well, we don't know what the lever's going to do. we got to wait until someone's in there. Tell him to go send Orvix in. <laughs> you don't see any way to enter this room from your point of view yeah it's a window but you don't see yeah you don't see how to get in this place just pull it that guardian was clearly there to pull it for if someone else steps into the room so it's All right. bad. pull the lever see what happens all suicide right. Suicide lever for him. Yeah, you pull the lever and you see the entire room through the window begin to turn and rotate. The entire room rotates. And then every once in a while, something crazy happens. Like you see um, uh, poison gas like shoot out of one of the walls. Another one, you see um, just an explosion shoot out of another side of the wall Poosh, as this room just rotates around the whole time you've got the lever held down. Danger room. Uh, we'll lift the lever back up. Is there anything, like, can we use the Tomb Guardian's body to, like, pry the lever into an up position so it can't be lowered by accident? Or, like, with, like, gravity? Uh, the lever looks like it's designed to want to stay up. You'd have to really exert force to keep it down. Like, it, it kind of snaps up. No so it seems like funny, but I don't trust you. 
Yeah, you seemed like it's somebody would have to be. I mean, and somebody was here to like actually lay it down, but you're not sure how you could keep it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you. Well, I was just gonna pry his body up underneath it. Okay. Yeah. Head. Yeah, you could. Okay, I see what you're saying. You prop him to where his yeah. head's like kind of up, <laughs> holding yeah. the lever up. Yeah. He's a, he's a big dude, so he could probably easily sit there and hold it up. I figured his feet were long enough to stretch him, so he touches the other wall. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even if it tries to fall, it doesn't have anywhere to go because it can't push him out of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, ironically, the Tomb Guardian is doing the opposite job. Well, he is guarding the tomb. It just <laughs> he's guarding it for not work. <laughs> Use the chains that are on him to tie it around the lever. So, again, even if someone comes in, they can't get him off of it quick enough. Mm hmm. I think I have a skill with like not making it or something like that. Oh, that's all you see in this room. All right, back we go. I have freedom of movement for like the next hour. Yeah, you like just slide that. right through there. Wee! Yeah, for an hour. Hey, Shellbrain, you should stay by her. She seems tough. She is tough. That's why I got my eye on her. <laughs> yeah. All right. Would any of you like to touch the purple stuff on the walls as you go by? Like to set it all on fire, please. <laughs> so burn this place uh, to the ground. Burn this mother to the ground. George touches. Death rays from everywhere. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not getting anywhere close to George as he touches that. Shit. Yeah, George, you touch it. and You just see the eye pop out. It doesn't do anything yet, but it pops out curiously and and looks at you, and looks at the skull, and then looks at you. It seems to just like take everything in as you whenever you do that. George looks at the skull, and he looks at the eye, and he just slowly takes his finger towards the eyeball <laughs> while he's looking at Yaka and pokes the eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm already driving this one to kill himself. This is a new record for Yaka. All right. The uh, eyeball retracts. And Jesus. Oh, man. Is it even more death rate? Oh, man. These fucking rolls. Uh, George, another crazy. eyeball comes out and uh, shoots that lovely deathy ray. In your general direction. More deathy than death. Uh, give me a deck saving throw, please. Remember, you have disadvantage, too, because it's of your ability. Oh, shit. Yeah, yep. Save. What is your... Actually, you know what? I don't want to use a portent day on you, on you, George. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> you kind of <Nice>. did. <laughs> a dex saving throw. What am I doing? Am I dodging out of the way? Uh, you are dodging out of the way of a, of a sorry, the, the, the eye retracts that you poked, and another one comes into another part of the purple mold and shoots a um, death ray at you. <laughs> For half. Oh, shit. Um, let me... You wanted to commit me... suicide. I know. Uh, let, me, let me try inspiration. And we inspiration oh, deck saving throw <laughs> ah <clears throat> george yes that death ray hits you full blast yaka cackles <clears throat> now does yaka get hit too uh yaka seems impervious to anything it stands in there and just dances around mm. Is this a magical effect that he might have advanced? Well, he doesn't have the sword anymore. Nope. Um, oh, yeah. I do have a shell sword. You do have the shell sword, yeah. That just gives you advantage, right? Yes. Which that would have been his inspiration. Right. And a third one. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So if you use the shell sword, because the shell sword gives you advantage. So if you use the inspiration, you have one more roll. Yeah, let's do that then. Okay. He didn't roll very well. I would count this as a magical effect, I think. One more time. I did not roll very well on Tone D10, George. Oh, no. All right, George, that death ray hits you full in the face for 36 necrotic damage. George dies. Oh, George. Um, is that a disintegration ray? 
It was not. Okay, thank God. It does have some fine print on it, and I'm going to make a ruling right now. George, <laughs> you have to roll uh -oh. all of your death saves right now. Like, just keep rolling until something happens? Keep rolling until you either live or die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what is, what, what the death save rules are again? It's, it's, you if you roll a, a 10 or above, 10. it's a success. Okay. If you roll less than 10, it's a fail. Okay. One success. One, One fail. fail. Two. Uh, or two success. success. Three, success. Three success. All right. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, George. So good. Yep. Unconscious, but still manages to hang on to his mortal coil. Yaka seems imminently disappointed. Oh, so close, big guy. So close. Your charge is dead, Yaka. Shouldn't you go back to being an animate or whatever you were doing before this? Oh, I'm here till his soul leaves his body. <laughs> I see it going right now. Oh, you could feed me some gems. You got any gems? I love gems. Is that really all it's going to take to get you to fuck off? But nobody asked me! <laughs> well, maybe if you talked like a goddamn human being. Oh, I wish you had touched me. I would have been all over you. Maybe you'll touch me next. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, George, George is just <laughs> <laughs> unconscious on the ground. You see, Yaga just kind of nudge him like a like a dog whose master's just down. Just like, <laughs> oh god! If we if All we right. feed you have enough gems, sorry, go ahead. I do have a potion of healing. I can dunk no, down his yeah. throat. All right, I'll do that. If we feed you enough gems, Yaku, what do you do? What will you do for us? Will you go inanimate? What's the story here? Yeah, I'll go back to my pedestal. That's fine. Maybe we could carry you around in a sack until we have you touch somebody else. We can get you a, a, a <laughs> Whatever gets you off, talk. man! <laughs> I'd like to carry you around in a sack, Yaku. <laughs> That's what I want. Hey, yeah. I'm just imagining this would be a fun thing to inflict on another enemy at some point. Some witches, some night hag. Yeah. That works for me. How do you feel about uh, messing with some night hags? Whoever touches me. <laughs> Are you that easy, Yaka? Really? That's all it get takes. Some, get some self respect, man. <laughs> I'll show you some self-respect. <laughs> he just nudges right, George again. <laughs> I don't remember how much, much a healing potion is. Uh, regular? I think a regular is 2d4 plus 2. Yeah. Or is it 4? Oh. I forget. I don't think it's 2d4 plus 2. So I'll roll it for Meanwhile, sure. Manix will very slowly take out this, the, the robe full of glittering gems... And he'll just start prying gems off one at a time and just tossing them to this annoying skull. Do you have any kind of monetary value with that thing or a page number or uh, anything? Uh, I probably have a page number. Let me look it up. George, you now have six hit points. George, I need to make a con save against the lingering injury. Lasting injury, whatever it's called. The skull. I was like, damn. <laughs> Okay, you uh, managed to not have any long-lasting effects. I mean, I doesn't Yaka count as a long-lasting effect? Kind of. <laughs> I have nothing. I, I got it in this campaign, I know that. <laughs> but other than that, there is no page numbers attached. Shoot. He at least knows that. Yep. Sounds like it was from the Pirates. Probably. All right, Yaka, tell me one thing. <clears throat> Why are you stuck? How are you stuck to me? You touched me. You brought on the curse. 
Yeah, but... Okay, yeah, it was from the pirates. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you can pry off all those gems and feed it to it one at a time, and it just eats it. Oh, 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 oh this is great! This is good stuff! And, Manix, you feel like you're feeding it hundreds of gold worth of gems. Great. And he doesn't stop? He doesn't stop. He keeps eating them. You're a greedy little bastard, aren't you? That's right! It's gonna take a lot of gems to get rid of me! I, I don't think it's going to take any gems to get rid of him at all. I think he just said that because he's hungry. Gems, are they disappearing? He's just a skull. What, what, what yeah, is he's eating He's eating them, and they seem to be just disappearing. Like, he's just crunching them, and there's nothing left. Where does he poop? <laughs> That's right. That's my question. <laughs> there's no poop. How does, how does he digest these gems? Very slowly. All right, well, it's somebody else's turn. I, I just gave him a whole cloak full of gems. <laughs> well, I'm not feeding this thing. I don't have any gems. My money is my own. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, I mean, but look, good. Gillian looks very generous. <laughs> 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 She's not here to complain about it. Uh, what is a, a uh, Chalcedony gem? Chalcedony? Sounds like a thing. Well, that is a, yep, I think it's about worth 50 gold pieces. All right, that's all she's got. It accepts it greedily. Oh, that was a big one. Nice! While the thing is eating, George goes invisible. Okay. It still, sees to, it still seems to hover, hover near you. Ah, oh, that's no fun! Uh, George takes a step. It follows you. It, it seems like it can't see you, but it's, it still seems like magically tied to you. We playing hide and seek now? I got one more. I got a Zircon gemstone. A Zircon? That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> well, except an amulet of Ray's dead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Aaron will get rid of that because he's never going to use it. Uh, it does seem to accept that. It e eats that. It's like, oh, yeah! Really? Okay. Actually, a Zircon, surprisingly, is worth as much as a Chalcedony. Or, you know. I got very nothing rich to feed it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of drooping. It's like, oh, man, this is a lot! Starting to get a little full. Starting like, to, huh? Yeah. You, you like you like gold, Yaga? I got I got gold. Piss on your gold, gems only. I got a a, a gemstone of controlling a gray slot. <laughs> yeah, how is that? that? <laughs> yeah, give me that. Give me, give me, give me. I don't know. I don't know. That one might. We might need that. Is uh oh, whatever. I think that's really it. Feed it to him. Just give it to him. We don't need it. I, I got I got bloodstone earrings. It's blood, bloodstone sounds like a gem. It does sound like a gem. I'm just we're just emptying our <laughs> just emptying your pockets. Inane problem. Get rid of this stupid thing. Yeah, you want to toss those earrings at it? Yeah. Oh, that's great! I love it! Oh, give me that big gray gem, too! I'll eat it! Give it to it. I'm gonna cast a Cure Wounds on... Uh, what's his face? The turtle guy. <laughs> <laughs> the turtle guy. Alright. Um, 
what Mannix really wanted to do, but but right as he's get, he'll do it. But I, I want you guys to know what Mannix was going to do. What Mannix was going to do is let George fight the slot one on one, and without telling George, command the slot to just be putting on a show and just be missing constantly, <laughs> and just have it just be the most one sided duel. So that but George just thinks he's kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> But unfortunately, I will go ahead. You don't have to. I, I'll do it. I feel we're almost there at this point. At this point, we're dealing with the sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. We've dumped so many gems. We have to keep giving thing. it gems. But no, we don't want to. Do that, whatever. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. You toss the slot gem at it. It eats it up. And as it done, he says, oh, what is what is that? I feel. Oh, I, I gotta go find this thing. And you see it just fucking rush off in a blur. Shit. <laughs> George, right behind. <laughs> That's true. I should follow it. <laughs> That's yeah. If you want to find the slot, it it rushes off in go. yeah into the distance. How quickly are you talking about? Somewhere in the distance, you can hear it say, "Hello there." And you hear this voice go, "No!" <laughs> like, can I? I mean, is it fat? Can I follow it? Can I run after it? Uh, sure, you can run after it. George, I'm gonna remind you, you have 17 hit points. George is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinting down the hallway. All right. It- it was this whole other room over here, George. Oh, uh, you gotta chase George. Yeah. He's gonna get himself killed again. Is the skull right there? Um, you see the skull. Um, uh, yeah, it's shunts its way across the uh, staircase down into the hallway to the south. Uh, same level or different level? Same level. It's like one of those comedic plays where everyone's just running after. That's right. Floating <laughs> skull. Chasing the hall. <laughs> yeah, the Benny Hill theme plays <laughs> as everybody just runs. <laughs> 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 it's a skull flies over. Yeah, you guys passed the staircase. There was some kind of uh statue in a hallway to the north you're still running past there's purple growth everywhere a hallway extends to the west and to the east with a crawl space so i'm having to montage really quick through all these locations <laughs> don't care jason skull don't care just don't go don't care jason skull um <sighs> you go to an area a hallway covered in pools of water uh with slick walls uh, but you do see a very tiny crawlway to the east, uh, and the skull shunts its way into this hallway. George, it's it's a, it's an exact same size like crawl space as the one that you and Kales had jumped into. <laughs> Greased himself up too. <laughs> Um, this water doesn't look magical at all, does it? Um, n- no, but there is Not a anymore. curtain of water to your north, and then the entire hallway is flanked by uh, statues, some of which are holding weapons. George, as you enter okay. the crawl space, you see the slod in here. Uh, invisibly, but since you've got the bandana, you can see it, and this skull immediately seems to be around the slot. And uh, you, you're not sure what happened, but for some reason, throwing the slot gem to the skull seems to transfer the curse to the slot, and now the skull is hovering around it, taunting it. What the hell are you supposed to be? Some kind of frog demon? This creature's just like, Arr. all right, now I can't have all of you jump in here without rolling initiative. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
It's the Benny Hill thing. You got, you got to stop us. We're just gonna keep going. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I freedom of movement. I was able to follow him, no problem. That's true. Um. Yeah. The you guys normally you'd be able to surprise the slot, but there's literally a three foot crawl space you're trying to crawl through, and no other openings to this thing. So, uh, as you get close, we're gonna roll for some initiative here. so poorly today. <clears throat> I love it because I can't imagine the DM could have even possibly foreseen this particular set of circumstances. When Raven's involved, there is no <laughs> there's no planning whatsoever. She, I am along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Completely, uh, George. Ironically, you get you do get the jump on the slot as you just <laughs> slide your way through here <laughs> and have followed the trail of the skull. George says, "Ah, I found you again." Does the slot say anything? The, the slot looks completely shocked by everything that suddenly happened right now. It's this skull came like screaming in here and started yelling at it, and then you just came in and then Kales, and I was just looking around. And it's telepathically saying, "What? No, quiet. What's no?" It just can't even understand what's going on with the skull. George says, "I want to kill you and take my sword back, but I know this skull is worse than death itself. <laughs> I've tried it. Now you empathize <laughs> with the slot." <laughs> George comes full circle. He decides to let the slot live just to have to have watch it deal with the skull. For you know what right you see happen? Eternity. The thing the slot does is it reaches out and grabs the skull and hugs it close. And you see its kind of eyes like glazed over and you can tell like the gods got some um, uh, hold over it. And it seems to be clutching the skull and the skull seems to be taunting at it, but it's just kind of like looking at it very greedily because it is a golden skull. Yeah. He's grabbing the skull. Skull is taunting him. Uh, probably just take whatever you want off of him right now. <laughs> They're in a deadlock. I know, right? Just yeah, like... you do. You do see your your thorn blade is at its side. It's got it's got your sword. What do I do about this? This is not what I expected. We created, we created this get weird it for symbiotic you. relationship between the skull and the slot. <laughs> I can I can steal your sword back for you. Uh, um, I, I'll try to steal it, but I'm like I don't know what to do. Do I? <laughs> all this work and all this distance, and he's got the analysis paralysis when actually facing the slot because <laughs> he knows how bad that skull is so much. I, I thought I would just kill you, but now that I'm here. I don't know. <laughs> I know now. I know how horrible this guy is. I think that's worse than dying. So maybe I'll just leave you be and let you suffer for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> a fate death worse than a... death. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, that that would be amazing. Man, I I had like all these plans on killing him and everything, but that is kind uh, of a badass plan, though, just to like leave it with the skull. <laughs> You hear in its mind, it's almost like shut down, too. It's just like, ah, ah. Yes, the slot is invisible, but George can still see it. He's got the true sight. The rest of you just see the skull, like, awkwardly being floated in midair. George says, the slot's here. I want to try to steal my sword back from him. That's probably a good idea. So, uh, stealth check? No, it's not a hand. Right? You can grab it. It's just determined if you want to do it without the slot noticing, basically. Oh, no, I don't care. I'm just going to grab it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can take the sword. Um, I mean, it does seem like it would maybe not want to lose any of its treasures, So, that, but if you want to just grab it. Yeah, I'll use that as my action. Okay. You have acquired your thorn blade again. And it seems to uh, still be staring at the uh, skull with this, this wild look in its eyes. Uh, and at the end of my turn, George says, "Meet your new friend." 
His name is Jaka. You guys are going to be stuck here that for a long time. George, if you guys don't want to tag it, I will literally take you out of initiative. Because this thing seems to be completely wrapped up in the skull. Question is... It's like a golem, like my precious thing. And it's also like this, the thing, the skull is just a never-ending litany of distractions for this lot. George says, I'm satisfied. <laughs> this is... <laughs> that brief interaction with the skull George just knows how terrible it is nice you know that's a that's a fate worse than death George you can have a point of inspiration for leaving the slide to its fate uh, this is the RPG the end of the, the end of the quest line that you have to like pick the exact right selection. yeah to end up not like having weird, to fight <laughs> the weird like 5% <laughs> pick this ending yep you managed you to, to, to solve this quest without fighting it in the end. That's amazing. Uh, you do feel like you probably don't want to hang around this area. Yeah, I want to get away from this thing as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, there's another crawl space on the other side of it, but you're not quite sure if you even feel comfortable crossing near the slot, but you guys would be able to exit out the way you came. I'll send my owl down there later. Okay. For now, we just back out slowly. So none none of us really, none of us are really sure what just happened either. I no, you you basically all chased after the skull, and the skull uh, seemed to be cradled by some invisible force. So, do I just see like the top of the skull, where it's the rest of it's cradled around something invisible that I can't see? Probably. I'm not sure what the rules are, but if like invisible hands cover something, that too is invisible. So it's probably like parts of the skull turn invisible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably an odd looking thing. I'm just trying to think about how Wongo would like this. Mm. <laughs> That's I mean, a problem. Wongo can't can see though. Skull all day. Yeah, you can't yeah. You, you can't see. You're just kind of confused. Like, ah! uh, yeah, the, the poll is available. If you all uh, watching live, please will vote for your MVPC for this session. But you all back out of the room and end up in a completely different area. If you wanted to backtrack, you could, but um, you are currently in a uh, hallway with still puddles of water covering the floor of a 15-foot wide hallway. The walls are slick with moisture and set with murals showing animal-headed humanoids and armor, most of which appear to be appear to brandish real weapons hanging on the walls. A three-foot crawlway in the east wall is flush with the floor. That's the one you just came into. Uh, and at the end of the hall, a rippling, transparent curtain of water fills a stone archway. Time for lightning bolts. I'd <laughs> vote for the skull. <laughs> I also vote for the skull. <laughs> Everybody wants the skull. Have, That's the DM. DM. I think the DM gets to be how the does it, how does it <laughs> Create a character so hated. I know. <laughs> the entire... they, they gave you <laughs> inspiration for next time. Yeah. I get- <laughs> the first. Says, I hate to admit it, Manix, but a heartfelt thank you. That thing was awful. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Think about what if you had just given that gem first. Oh, that's actually a bummer now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you guys spent a lot of gems. <laughs> I, I, I poured a lot of money into that skull. <laughs> He's talking about it like his failed business. I put all my savings <laughs> yeah. into that skull. I took out two loans <laughs> to support that skull. Skull was MVP. I appreciate that. Um, otherwise, I think that will uh, end this session as you all walk away and the camera pulls slowly back from this slot, just cradling this golden skull. <laughs> With my precious, like going through its mind and the skull being like, oh man, this thing's terrible. <laughs> Slowly uh, fade to black from there. Well, the chat really liked the skull, but it looks like, per our rules, uh, it's going to go to Manix as our MVPC for okay. this session. Maybe they felt bad that you spent all those gems. I spent all that money. <laughs> 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 Skull for the win. Excellent. We love the skull. 
Um, so yeah, Mannix, you will get uh, inspiration for next time. George, I mentioned you got inspiration as well. So that will do it for us. Uh, thank you to Chris, Heather, Raymond, and Reese for playing. Thank you to all the wonderful fans for watching. Go to roguewatson.com for recaps. Patreon.com slash roguewatson if you would like to support the channel. Live streaming our D&D adventures every week. And we will see you all next time. Skull for the win. Skull MVP. <laughs> Man. I have I have good luck with skulls. I gotta say. Yeah. Just. And you, you, you've had like three skull-related right voices that have been pretty standout. Yeah. And one of them was like three different skulls, if I remember correctly. It, it, yes, I think that it was like a room full of skulls. Yeah.